what they have in the church is not really Bible faith. And that's what I'm going to teach. But that's not what I'm going to teach. That's what the te- that's what the scriptures are going to show. And John 8 verses 31 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He's speaking to believers here. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth the truth shall make you free. We're going to be set free tonight. Mm-hmm. It's going to be because of the different teachings they have on faith. We're going to be set free. We're going to see what the, what the Word of God says faith is. Biblical faith. Everybody wants something to believe in. Everybody wants to have faith in something. And a lot of people have faith in their religion. I didn't say the Word of God. I said in their religion. They have faith in. They have faith in a person. Whether it be a pastor, a teacher, a priest. Or even a family. Because in Luke 3, eight, It says we have Abraham as our father. They were taking it because their father was Abraham. That they were right with God. That's what their faith was in. Some people have faith in money. Material possessions. Who needs God? We have everything we need. That's what their faith is in. Faith in their own wisdom. Like the atheists. They don't even believe in God. They're so smart. Or even college people who think they know it all. Their knowledge is their faith. Some people have faith in drugs. Alcohol and drugs. I mean that's what they depend on. Is alcohol or drugs. To make it through the day. Which is really not that much difference from from coffee. When I hear somebody say, I have to have that cup of coffee in the morning before I get started. That's what their faith is in. They're not saying that, but that's what it is. I mean, they can't get started until they have that cup of coffee. They need to take that fleshly faith that they, they want to put something in. And Lord and let the Lord give them the faith they need. Let the Lord give them the faith they need. Not their own faith. I've heard the word faith used in ways that doesn't go with the Bible. That's what I'm saying. Let's read the scriptures on faith. Let's see what the, what the scriptures say faith means. In Mark chapter 11, it speaks about a fig tree that Jesus had cursed. And the next day, the disciples saw that fig, fig tree completely dead. He cursed it one day, and the next day, it was completely dead. Which, you know, for a tree to die, it slowly dies. It don't die overnight. The leaves just start to wither little by little. But this fig tree was completely dead the next day. And they were, they were amazed that they were marvel how quick it died. So Jesus used that to teach them about faith. How powerful faith can be when you're joined to the purpose and the will of God. That's very important. The purpose and the will of God. This is where faith comes in. And we're going to start at verse 22 of chapter 11 of Mark it says and Jesus after he talked about the uh, fig tree and Jesus answered and said unto them have faith in God very few of us very few of us have total faith in God I'm talking about his words the Bible that's what I'm talking about the words of God in the Bible when he says not to do something or to do something we have a hard time with many of God's commands in the Bible so we need faith. We need to learn about faith. We need to get Bible faith. Verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, let's be very honest with ourselves, okay? How many of us can honestly say that we have that kind of faith? I mean, you can honestly say that you can go out, not here in Port Arthur, but somewhere where they have mountains, and look at that mountain and and have faith that you can move that mountain. I mean, move that mountain. And that's what it's saying right here, right? Well, you can say it till you're blue in the face. The mountain's not going to move. What comes out of the mouth and what comes from the heart are two different things. Now we know that this has to be a figure of speech, right? What he's speaking about is the mountains in our lives. That's what he's talking about. 
what Jesus wants us to know was an imaginable power that's available to us when we have faith in the Word of God. When the Lord tells us, I mean, the power that we have, we have faith in the words of God. And there's a lot of the words and words in the Bible that, wow, well, we I don't know, we just can't comprehend that that can happen. But that's where faith comes in. We need to have faith that can move a mountain. But we have to be sincerely believing. We have to sincerely believe without doubting. And it will happen. There will be conditions to when to uh, having this kind of faith. Verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. When we're led by the Holy Spirit, we're going to find that some of the things we used to desire are no longer there. We wanted to keep up with the Joneses at one time. Well, they have that. We need to get it. We pray for it. When the Holy Spirit is, is taking over your life, we don't think that way anymore. That's not our thoughts. When we're walking with the Lord, our pleasures, our desires are different. Look at 1 John 3.22 And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Now we're going to know what is pleasing God. How are we going to know what's pleasing God unless we have the whole counsel of God, which is the Word of God. Which Acts 20:27 20, says, we need the entire Word of God, not just the Scriptures here and there, like some people do. They just read Scriptures here and there. Now we need the whole Word of God, the whole counsel of God, to know what pleases Him, what's pleasing in His sight. But it says right here, whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. But what it does it say? Because we keep His commandments. That's very important that we keep His commandments. And when we do though, when we do that, it says, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. That's what's going to happen when we do His commandments. Also in John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, the biggest word in this verse right here is if. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. If my words abide in you, which is his commandments, that's what it's talking about. His command. If my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. These are conditions. That we have to meet before we we're, before we can get answered prayer. The very next verse tells us one of the conditions we have to meet. It says, "And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses." Now the reason is because you're in. You're in sin. You've broken fellowship with the Lord. Because you haven't forgiven someone. You expect the Lord to forgive you when you sin. Then he expects you to forgive someone when they sin against you. We're Christians, right? And Christians mean being Christ-like. So right here he says, you want to move that mountain? Forgive others. If you don't, you're not in fellowship with me. The person has the a person can have the spirit of unforgiveness, and if he has that, he's not walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord is what? Living by his commandments. First John one verse nine. If we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins. Like I said, some of us might have somebody something against a brother or a sister and we don't confess that. Right here, right here it says, if, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and, and just to forgive us our sins. That's the scriptures. So we need to be forgiving people. We need to be forgiving people no matter what they do to us. Look what we've done to Jesus. I'm not going to get all into that, but we know 
We treated him like dirt when he was down here. We tortured him. He suffered tremendously and then we killed him. We spit on him. That's what we did to Jesus and what did he do? He forgave us. And I'm going to say it again, if we're Christians, we're supposed to be Christ-like. That's what it means. There's other conditions for unanswered prayer. Psalms 66, 18. If I record iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So what he's saying right here is if I have sin in my heart, the Lord's not going to hear me. You want your prayers heard by God? Don't have sin in your heart. That's why when we pray, you should always go to forgiveness first. Before you even ask the Lord for anything, you say, Lord, forgive me. Blah, blah, blah. This is what I did today. Forgive me for doing that. If you want God to hear your prayer, ask for forgiveness before you pray. Another one is in 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Men, if we're not honoring our wives, our prayers are, no, are going no further than the ceiling. So there's conditions on God answering prayers. And this is some of them. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So if you're covering your sins, if you're covering them, the Lord says right now, right here, He says, you're not going to prosper. You're not going to grow. These are the words of God. And all the scriptures are very serious. We need to take all the scriptures seriously. And right here, when He says, you're not going to prosper, you better believe Him. Don't cover your sins. You can't hide them from the Lord anyway. You might cover them from people, but you can't cover them from the Lord. The Lord sees them. The ones who don't have their prayers answered are going to be like the ones in Matthews chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How many, how many preachers have you seen on TV who are slaying people in the spirit? They touch them on their forehead and knock them down and they're being slain in the spirit. Well, they're claiming they're, they're healing people. And this is the people it's talking about. People like that who are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this in your name and do this? No, you were putting on a show. These are hypocrites. That's why the Lord will say, hey, depart from me, I never knew you. Believe me, their prayers are not being answered. Their prayer, God can't even hear their prayers. Luke 6, verses 46 and 47. And why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not do and do not the things which I say. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. So the Lord is saying, Why call me Lord Lord? Why are you calling me Lord Lord when you're not doing the things I say? I mean, how can you claim, proclaim to be a Christian, but you're not obeying the words of God? He's not going to hear you. Many times, the, the verses I just gave you, He that doeth, those of us who follow the commandments, who obey the commandments, now we're going to sin, we're going to fall. But from our heart, in our heart, we want to follow the words of God. It's not like we look at that verse and say, Oh, I just, I'm not going to do that. Not get drunk? Mm, I like getting drunk. I won't obey that one. No, no, that's not walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord is when sincerely from the heart you want to obey His words. The Lord hears us, but it's our sin or our sins that keep God from answering our prayers. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is His 
he ear heavy that he cannot hear. So the Lord hears our prayer. Don't think he can't hear it. He hears our prayer. But verse 2, But your iniquities, your sins, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. There are, are, are these verses getting to you? I mean, really, are they getting to you? Because right here I'm, I'm saying, Man, who? Are you just living a sinful life and it's not really bothering you? But this ought to bother you. You're being separated from God when you sin. That's what happened to Jesus on the cross. Matthew 27, 46. This is what Jesus on the cross. It says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, And I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this right, but it says, Eli, Eli, lama shakbahiyah. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's got to be the hardest words Jesus has ever said. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If God couldn't look on his own son when he took the sins of the world on him, that's why God couldn't look at him. Because he took the sins of the world on, him, on himself. And that's why God had to turn away from him. Now if he did that to his own son, you think he's going to do it to us? If we want the Lord to answer our prayers, one of, one of the conditions is John 9.31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, which we just learned that. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. I'm giving you several verses to show. You want your prayers answered? we got to do his will. Hebrews 13.21 Make you perfect in every good works to do His will, working in you that which is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Doing God's will. That's what is pleasing in His sight, is doing His will. How many of us want to please God? I'm sure all of us do. But there's a difference between saying it and doing it. Do you want to do it? God says, Do my will. What's God's will? The Word of God. His words are His will. So if we're not reading His words, how are we going to do His will? First John 5.14 And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, according to His will, He hears us. Faith is not asking the Lord for things we want, and most of the time it's material things. That's not faith. When we're walking with the Lord, the things we probably are going to ask for is, Lord, I want to get closer to you. That's God's will. Lord, I want to get closer to you. I want to grow. I want to grow in the scriptures. This is God's will. This is pleasing to God. Lord, I want a, a boat so I can go fishing every Sunday. You think that's God's will? No. God's will is you asking to get closer to Him. That's what we need to be asking. He says, you ask these things, I'm going to give them to you. You want to get closer? I'm going to help you get closer to me. Amen. He's going to answer those prayers. You got those religions who believe, who believe just what I just said. Oh, you want the boat? Just pray for it. The Lord said, just ask for it and it's yours. Are we, is that what we're learning tonight? I don't think so. Many churches have taught to be able to move mountains. They say, we have to have strong faith. And you say, we need to have enough confidence in God's power to move a mountain. And if we can believe hard enough and remove doubt from our heart, then the mountain will be removed. It's all, what you hear in church is, if we, that sounds like positive thinking. If you just believe hard enough, you know, just put it in your mind, mind over matter, it'll happen. And that's what the church is teaching. Positive thinking. And this is causing many Christians to fall. Because when it don't happen, they blame it on God. And when they blame it on God, what's that going to do to them? Get them closer to the Lord? No, it's going to draw them away from the Lord. So these teachings can be very dangerous. It's not we, 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 we. No, that's not what faith is. That's 
like I said, that's positive thinking, that's mind over matter, that's what the church, many churches teach. Bible faith is not mental, it's not here in the brain. It's about 18 inches deeper. It's Bible faith is, comes from the heart where the spirit is. That's where Bible faith is. In Matthew 17, verses 14 through 20, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and is sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be unto you. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, if, they're, if they were doing it the way we do it now, have a healing service, they're applied doing their ritual customs, you know, they either was anointing them with oil or they were yelling and screaming at the devil and rebuking the devil to come out of the boy. You know, that's the way many of people do it now. And that's maybe the way they were doing it. But then Jesus comes along and what does he do? He just speaks the word. All he does is just speak the word and the devil comes out the boy. We can learn. We can learn by just reading the Bible. Well, what are these people doing who are yelling and screaming at the devil? Is that the way that Jesus did it? No. Nowhere in the Bible is Jesus yelling and screaming at the devil. All he does is speak the word. That's it. That's the power of God. Amen. That's what we have. We have it. Jesus speaks again and tells the disciples the reason they couldn't do it was because of their unbelief. The word unbelief means their lack of faith. It didn't mean their unbelief of they didn't believe in Jesus because we know they believed in Jesus, right? right? They were disciples, they were followers of God. We know they believed in Jesus. It wasn't because of their lack of belief, it was because of their lack of faith. In Mark 6, verses, verse 7 and 13, And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. This is what Jesus did. He gave them power over unclean spirits. And in verse 13, And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. Now they had been commissioned by the Lord, and they were empowered by Him to go and heal and to cast out demons. The Lord gave them this power, which we have also. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't... Uh, because of their lack of faith, because they had been doing it before. The Lord gave them power to do it. So what happened? Well, back in verse 16 it says, And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Well, the scripture is right. Because they couldn't heal him. They couldn't. The word of God could. Like I said, they had done it many times before, but here they couldn't do it. They felt that they were... I think they got to where they felt they were the ones doing it. Okay, we can do that. We, you know, when we do something over and over, after a little while, that's not faith. At first, it's faith. You know, because we, we we believe you know it's coming from God. We have faith that God can do it. But then after you do it over and over, then it's like it's like you're doing it. It's no longer you're no longer dependent on faith in the Word of God. You're dependent on self. And I believe this is what happened to the disciples here. The disciples had the faith that saves, which you can't lose, but their faith in, every, in other areas of God they were lacking in. Like in Matthew 6, verse 30 through 34. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, 
which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that we have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This is one of the, this is one of the scriptures, some of the scriptures here that people can't handle. They can't handle this. Don't worry about tomorrow. Well, I like to be depressed. I like to be stressed out. That's why I worry about tomorrow. I worry about tomorrow. But God says not to. He says, I got tomorrow. We have a hard time accepting that. We, we have a hard time having faith in that. I mean, Jesus told them, He sent them out two by two. And in Mark 6, verse 8 and 9, it says, And commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, except a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. He's telling them not to take extra pair of sandals and only take one coat with them. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. This is what you need. I'll take care of the rest. Just take what you need. I'll take care of it. This is what Jesus is saying. He's, that's what he's telling them right here. Right. Send them out two by two. I'll take care of them all. I mean, we, we just read the verses where Jesus said that. Right. That's why he sent them out that way. He said, don't take anything with you. I will take care of your needs. Jesus told them this before he fed the, the thousands of people that followed him. Jesus had told them this. And when the people were there and they were hungry, they, they told Jesus, we're going to have to send them away. After what Jesus just, what they had been told, they forgot what Jesus said. They were, they were going to send them away because they didn't have no food. And what did Jesus say? I'll take care of you. And he did. He fed thousands, didn't he? Yeah. The disciples didn't have no faith with Jesus. It happened again in Matthew uh, chapter 16, verses 8 through 10. They, uh, they thought they needed bread, and they didn't have any. And Jesus had to remind them about feeding the thousands. Why do, I mean, Christians, why? I mean, why do we have such a short memory? I mean, he fed them, and then again, it's time to have bread, and they didn't have any, and they worried. Right. Do we do that? Do we do that? It don't have to be with food. Do we do that with anything in our life with the Lord? We've seen them take care of this, whatever it may be, and then when that happens again, we're worried again. Yeah. I hope you hear me. Mm-hmm. When Jesus tells us something, it's the truth. Right. It's the Word of God. He doesn't waste His words. And all of them, all of them, He keeps. So we need to, we need to believe in the words of God. We need to. We have to put faith in the Word of God. Faith in the Word of God. Also in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus said in verse 18, Now when Jesus saw the great multitude about Him, He gave commandment to depart on to the other side of the river he's talking about then we drop down to verse 24 and behold there arose a great tempest in the sea insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves but he was asleep speaking about Jesus and his disciples came to him and woke him saying Lord save us we perish and he saith unto them why are ye fearful O ye of little faith then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Now, in verse 18, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. So should the, should the, should the disciples, should they have been worried about anything? No. Because of what they saw with their eyes, this storm, where was their faith? It dropped. It sank. Because they forgot what Jesus said. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. 
If Jesus said, let's go on to the other side, you're going to the other side because Jesus said it. But what happened on the way? They had a storm. O ye of little faith, is what he says. Do we hear the words of God here? Yeah. I mean, really. When God says something, it's going to happen. It's going it's, to, believe me, it's going to happen. Believe it. Again, in Matthew 14, verses 28 through 31, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, speak, Jesus said, come. And when Peter was came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. Verse 30, but when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore doest thou doubt? What did Jesus tell him? In verse 29, what did Jesus tell him? Peter wanted to come out to him, walk on the water. And what did Jesus say? He said, come. So should Peter have, should Peter have worried about anything again? Sure. But again, with his eyes, he saw the storm and he began to sink. Jesus said, come. Peter could have walked all the way to Jesus with no problem. Done. Because God, I mean, Jesus said it. Come. But because of what he saw with his physical eyes, he sank. Believe me, people, when Jesus says, come, or whatever he says, whatever we read in the Bible, he means it. We read it, and for some reason, we let it go into one ear and out the other. The Lord says, he who has ears, let him hear. Hear what God has shown us tonight. If he tells you in the word, hey, this is whatever, believe it. We have to believe it. It's the word of God. Where is your faith? Where is your faith if you can't believe the words of God? What kind of Christian are you if you can't believe what he says? How are you going to be Christ-like if you can't believe the words God has given us? Do you hear what I'm saying? Let me give you one more. In John chapter 21, Peter and some of other disciples were fishing, and Jesus came by and asked them if they had caught anything. And they answered, they said no. And it says in John 21, 6, And he said unto them, Jesus, Jesus said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast their four, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Jesus told them, do this. And they did it. And what happened? They were blessed tremendously. So what do you think is going to happen to us when we believe the Word of Jesus, the Word of God? What do you think is going to happen to us? He's going to bless us tremendously. Amen. We're going to, when we have faith in His words, in His words, not in your pastor, not in your preacher, priest, teach, I mean, I, I don't show that. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord. Don't put your confidence in a man. That's what the Bible says. Read the words of God. That's why people are just falling all over the place. That's why Christians, I mean really true born Christians, are living defeated lives. Do you hear me? They're living defeated lives because they don't obey the word of God. They don't have faith in the words of God. It seems that when everything's going well, everything's under control, our health, with the things we need in life, you know, everything's good. Money, our faith in God is good. It's good. But when things start to happen, when the storms start to come in, what happens? Our faith just goes downhill. It's the same faith that the God that the Lord has given us. The faith that He gave us to, 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 to believe this is there, but we don't seem to use it. We go back to the flesh. That's what we do. We go back to the flesh and start worrying. Believing God's words. Having faith in God's words. Faith should come in when the storms come in. 
that's when the faith should come in. When everything's good, everything's fine. You know, you, just, you don't need too much faith there because everything's fine, everything's good. But as soon as tribulations start coming in, the storm starts coming, that's when your faith should come out. You all hear me? That's when your faith should come out. But instead, most Christians, most Christians, don't use it. They forget the faith that the Lord has given us. The Lord. Which I'm going to get on that next week. The main thing on faith is obeying God. Obeying God and His words. We obey God and His words. Follow His words. Whatever He tells us. If we have faith in that, we will live victorious in this world. Instead of being depressed because of whatever. Instead of getting all stressed out for whatever. When you have something to pray about, be right with God, because then He can hear you. Remember, if there's sin in your life, if you're not right with God, don't even pray, because He can't hear you. Take these scriptures. You're, you got them right there. Read these scriptures. Yeah. Read them. Grow. We can have strong faith. We can, if we just believe. 